What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Dan. You've clicked on this video because you want to sleep comfortable outdoors. Whether you are a car camper, a backcountry camper, <laughs> a backpacker, whatever you are, perfect video for you because um, I'm on a backpacking trip right now, just a one-nighter with my uh, eight-year-old son and it's winter out. So, uh, and it's 45 degrees, which means that it's like a sloppy winter here in Southern Illinois. Uh, the ground is just super slushy, uh, muddy, and um, it's gonna get below freezing tonight. So how are we going to sleep comfortable? How am I gonna keep my eight-year-old son comfortable? Okay, so first thing is you wanna pick a proper tent location. If you are car camping, most car camping locations are gonna have, especially if it's like a, a camping ground where you have already established campsites, they're gonna have pretty decent spots for a tent. Here, uh, they do have great spots for a tent, but it's, uh, you know, like I said, it's really sloppy, really just muddy. And so finding a tent spot here wasn't the easiest. Um, there is some drier locations over there that looks dry um, on top, but it's actually pretty wet underneath, but it's also slanted really poorly. So I don't wanna pick a campsite over here because I don't want to be slanting and rolling all night long. That's one big mistake that a lot of people make when they're um, first uh, camping or backpacking is that they pick a location that's on an angle and then they roll all night long or they slide all night long in their tent and it just makes the night miserable. So you want to pick a proper tent location. Now I've picked this location here because it's the least wet of what I could find. Um, the snow here uh, is slushy, but I've got a piece of ground cloth underneath the tent which is very, very important. You wanna have a um, waterproof ground cloth underneath your tent. That's gonna prevent water from coming up and seeping through the bottom of your tent. And that's also going to uh, prevent anything from uh, sharp rocks or sticks or any like pine needles or anything from uh, poking through the bottom of your tent and ripping and damaging your tent as well. But one big thing you wanna make sure is to make sure that that uh, ground cloth is tucked all the way underneath your tent. And the reason for that is because when water uh, does come, it can land on the uh, ground cloth. That's gonna cause the water to seep into the nylon because it's between the ground cloth and the nylon of your tent. And it's gonna make it so that you're gonna have water inside your tent. You definitely don't want that. What did you say, bud? I said that my fire's going really well. Your fire's going good? He's helping me build the campfire. So I'm filming videos and he's uh, collecting uh, tinder for the fire tonight. Thanks, buddy. Okay, the next thing you want to do is actually something you probably should have done before <laughs> you even left your house. <laughs> uh, you want to have a proper tent uh, for whatever adventure that you're going on. So um, in this situation, um, I'm actually using the Big Agnes Copper Spur. Uh, this is a, a fully freestanding tent, and it's also a double wall tent. Now, I, if that's confusing to you, I'll explain it real quick. So a freestanding tent means that the poles uh, actually hold up the tent. So you don't have to have this thing staked out. Like you don't have to even bring stakes if you don't want to, which is really nice for a place like this because the ground here is actually still frozen. So I couldn't get the stakes in the ground. And so having a freestanding tent in this situation is a great option. And if I were to say to you, hey, um, if you had one tent to pick out of all the tents to possibly buy, I would encourage you to buy a freestanding tent because um, it's just gonna be the most versatile in any situation. And a double walled tent means that there's actually two layers. There's a inner net and then there's an outer rain fly so that creates the two walls and the inner net will stop uh, condensation from getting on you at night so like when it drops below freezing tonight our breath is going to create moisture inside of the tent and if you don't have a double wall tent a lot of times the stuff inside of your tent like your sleeping bag and your pillow and even your hood if you're wearing a hood and that kind of stuff can get moisture on it and you're going to wake up and be like well how did my tent get so wet well that's why because <laughs> uh, you don't have a double wall tent so this is a great tent for this specific scenario. And it's also big enough for myself and my son. So this is a two person tent and on my own, it's like a palace, but we just fit perfectly in there. And it's got enough room for all of our gear, uh, the backpacks to stay in the vestibules, that's these door areas here. And then um, I can hang my food bag up there in the tree and uh, we're good to go. So um, having a shelter that's proper for whatever adventure you're going on is key. Oh, nice. Nicely done. Check that out. Good job, bud. Good job. Thanks. So all the gear that I'm talking to you about today can actually be found at backcountry.com. Backcountry is one of the most easy to use websites 
ever. Um, if you just don't know what to buy, you can actually reach out to one of their gearheads. You just click on the chat function and uh, they're former Olympians, former trail guides, former athletes, and they will walk you through exactly what you're looking for. Like, hey, I need a double wall tent. Help me to find one that's gonna uh, you know, uh, work well in a below freezing scenario. And these guys know their stuff. They're gonna be able to help you do that. So um, make sure you use the gearhead function. And then they've also given me a coupon code. It's Dan B. 15, uh, and that should help you guys out, get you a couple bucks off, hopefully 15%. Uh, some exclusions do apply, but try it and uh, see how it goes for you. Okay, I know you're wondering how to sleep comfortable, and that's why you clicked on the video, and you're like, why are you telling me about locations and tents? Well, it all matters, okay? Uh, so just chill out, all right? You got this. We both got this together. I'm going to help you out. Okay, so uh, the next thing is to choose um, a sleep system that is appropriate for your adventure, but is also comfortable for your adventure, because you want to sleep good, right? So um, let me just show you what I've got here. I have a big, wide, this is a very wide, 25 inch wide sleeping pad. And I love that because it's um, a pad that I'm not gonna roll off of at night. And it's also really thick. So this is, I think about two and a half inches thick. Uh, this pad is actually the Nemo Tensor insulated pad. And then underneath it, I even brought a little foam pad that I threw underneath there just to add a little bit of extra warmth to it and uh, make it so it didn't slide around or anything like that at all. But a wide, wide sleeping pad is really, really important if you're the type of person like me where you roll around all night long. And then the other thing is, is I've got this awesome sleeping bag here that is also um, rated properly. So that's super important. So this is the Big Agnes um, Torchlight uh, UL 20 degree bag, because uh, it is gonna drop below freezing tonight. So I wanna, I wanna make sure I have a bag that's rated properly. And I wanna make sure that my sleeping pad is rated properly. Now this sleeping pad is rated to, I think uh, 3.5. If I'm wrong on that, I'll put it up on the screen, but that's uh, like our value. That's an insulation value to tell you basically how warm this pad is gonna keep you. And that should keep me uh, warm to about 20 degrees in this pad. And this is rated to 20 degrees and those all work together. So if your pad isn't rated properly, like if it's a non-insulated pad or if it's just, you know, I don't know, something else, and it's gonna suck that cold right out of you. Now my son, he's also got um, a 25 inch wide pad. His is the Thermarest uh, NeoAir X-Therm. That's a much warmer pad and that's why I gave it to him. But it's also a wide pad. And then he's got this 20 degree bag here. This is the Western Mountaineering Alpen Light, another great, uh, sleeping bag. And so our sleep systems, us being in here together, we're going to sleep super good. The whole bottom of this tent is like covered in a <laughs> sleeping pad, all rated properly. I got my tent set up correctly. I've got my location set up correctly. I've got the double wall tent. Um, and so this is just a perfect storm for a perfect storm. It's, I hope it doesn't storm, but this is just a perfect scenario to sleep really, really good. Okay. Another tip. Um, and this is probably the most popular tip I have from a video I made like a year and a half ago, which I will link up right up here for you, which will also help you out, um, is to sleep as good as you sleep at home by mimicking what you do at home. So like for the longest time, I would bring a pillow like this one. Uh, this is just a regular air pillow. And obviously I still do bring this, <laughs> but that's just because I've only got two of the other kind of pillows I'm gonna show you, which my son and I are both using. I like to sleep with two pillows at home and I'm totally fine with bringing the extra weight because it's gonna help me sleep. And that's super, super important on a backpacking trip to get good sleep. So I don't mind that at all. Um, but I want to talk to you about this pillow right here. This is the Thermarest um, compressible pillow. Man, this is an awesome pillow. Um, this is the small, which is a pretty large pillow. And this thing I think weighs about seven ounces and it compresses, you know, decently small and packs down into my backpack pretty easily. Um, and it's filled with recycled mattress on the inside. So these little tiny ball foam ball mattress thingies on the inside. And it's a lot like the pillow that you would sleep with at home. So that's gonna help me sleep uh, out here as well. And then obviously I brought another one for my son. Trying to mimic how you sleep at home is really, really important. And don't be afraid to do that out here um, when you're backpacking because um, it's just gonna make the whole experience a lot better for you. So another tip if it's gonna get cold is, um, especially below freezing, I bring a Nalgene bottle. So this is a Nalgene bottle. Um, and these are really nice because you can actually fill these up with boiling water and, um, it won't hurt the actual bottle. And what that does is you fill it up with boiling water, you screw the cap on as tight as you can. And then if you can put like this inside of like a Ziploc bag or a dry bag just to like 
double bag this thing so it's not going to leak on you. You can actually stick this down inside of your sleeping bag. You can put it, um, you know, down by your foot box of your sleeping bag or maybe between your legs. Uh, but it's going to stay warm all night long and it's going to act like a mini heater inside of your bag. So a Nalgene bottle is a huge, huge uh, thing to take when it's really cold out here. I brought one for myself and my son and that's what we're going to do tonight. Hopefully uh, this video is going to help you guys sleep comfortable. Um, if it did, let me know in the comments below. If you guys have extra tips to help other people uh, sleep comfortable, like, you know, layering tips and all that stuff, make sure you leave that in the comments below to be super helpful. And uh, I'll leave my Instagram right here. Hit that like button and I will see you on the next one.